Right, that, I forgot that last time. Okay, so just for the video, covalent compounds, that's today's notes. So a covalent compound is going to be created when you have a non-metal and a non-metal coming together, whereas an ionic compound is a metal and a non-metal. Um, the big, big thing here is that ionic compounds completely transfer electrons. Do you guys remember when we talked about metals giving up and non-metals gaining? Yeah. You don't have to write this slide down. This is just a review. So over here, we know that sodium has one valence electron. How did we know that? Because it's in group one. Because it's in group one. So over at the periodic table, sodium is in group one, therefore it has one valence electron. Is it happy? No. No, right? How many does every atom really want? Eight. 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 So it's easier for sodium to lose one than to gain seven. So that's exactly what's going to happen. Sodium is going to lose its valence electron. When it loses, it becomes positive. And then chlorine, chlorine's in group what? Group 7A. Seven. Group 7A, seven. very good. So how many uh, valence electrons does this chlorine have? Seven. seven. Is it easier to uh, lose seven or gain one? Gain one. And that's what happens. It gains one and it becomes negative. The ionic bond is the electrostatic interaction or the attraction between these oppositely charged atoms. That's an ionic bond. It results from a transfer of electrons. We know that, right? Sodium transferred his electron to chlorine. Make sense? Yes. yes. All right. Covalent bonds are different. Covalent bonds are going to be shared electrons. All right? So think about it. Um, metals, do they have high electronegativities or low electronegativities? By the way, what is electronegativity? Uh, I think we talked about it. <laughs> Did we talk about it? I don't think so. Uh, it's one of our vocab uh, words that we had in the essay on periodic trends. Oh. <laughs> okay, so when you think about electronegativity, this is what I want you to think of. You are you are wanting to hold on to electrons. So the ability to hold on to electrons. You can think about it as being very greedy for electrons. So an atom that is very electronegative is going to hold on. He's not going to give up. So non-metals are very electronegative, and metals would be low electronegativity. Because they because they lose electrons, absolutely. So <laughs> you can think about your metals losing electrons and your non-metals gaining, and that's easy. It's an ionic bond. But what about when you have two atoms that are very electronegative? Is anybody going to be giving up uh, electrons? No. No, right? So here's a problem. How many valence electrons does fluorine have? Seven. Seven. Listen, obviously has seven. Are they happy? No. No. So they're both like unhappy. They're both grumpy and mad but neither one of them wants to give up their electrons. So what are they gonna do? Sharing is sharing, I guess. <laughs> They're going to share. So these guys, these guys are like, I'm unhappy alone. And he's like, well, I'm unhappy alone. And he's like, well, how would you give me some electrons? And he's like, no. And then they're like, all right, well, what's the next best thing? Let's share our electrons. When they share them, you can count these electrons for both atoms. So now fluorine has eight and this fluorine has eight. That overlap where these electrons are being shared is called the covalent bond. You guys, I don't know what we're doing with the labs or whatever it is that's going on here, but we need to be paying attention to notes. Can we put the labs away, please? Okay, so this overlap right here, that is the covalent bond. Uh, please go ahead and write in your notes that the covalent bond is from shared electron pairs. You can draw this picture in your notes.
30 more seconds. And don't worry, I'll post these notes again. So if you don't finish, just leave some room and you can come back to it. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next slide. You do not have to write this slide down. This is just reiterating what we just talked about. So here's a chart showing all of the electronegativities of the different elements. The number at the bottom here is not the normal number at the bottom. It's now going to be specific for electronegativity. Electronegativity can go from zero all the way to four. So fluorine is the most electronegative atom, and he has an electronegativity of around four. Here it says 3.98. We're going to consider that four. All right, so here's the metals. Metals are 0 0.82, 0 0.82, 0 0.79, and then our nonmetals, 2.96. You can see there's a very big difference. Mm -hmm. Because these nonmetals are so electronegative, we can imagine them just stripping away the electrons. They're like magnets. If they get near metal, metals hold on to those electrons very weakly, so a nonmetal can come in and easily just grab it away. That's the idea of electronegativity. When you transfer electrons, what kind of bond are we forming? Transferring, ionic bonds. So when the metal just completely loses and the non-metal gains, that's ionic. Mm -hmm. All right. But then again, when you have two guys and they're kind of playing tug of war with their electrons, nobody's really getting them. They're kind of just shared in between. That's going to be non-metal and non-metal. What kind of bond is that? Covalent. Covalent. All right. Please write down this right here, Lewis dot structure and the definition. I'll explain it in a few seconds. Are we writing? You don't have to draw the pictures, no, just this part. So in the past, we talked a lot about Bohr models. Who remembers what a Bohr model is? The circle thingies. Alexandra, were you going to add something? The circle thingies, um, these thingies, all of these circles and drawing the electrons in those circles, those are the Bohr models. In the Bohr models, we draw all of the electrons. We draw what we call the core electrons, the electrons in the inside shells, and the valence electrons, the electrons in the outer shells. But in Lewis structure models, we are only going to draw the valence electrons. Did you have a question? Okay. It makes our life a lot easier. Who remembers that bell work that I gave where it had like 56 electrons? <laughs> so it's a lot easier to just draw the valence versus all of those four. The reason that we focus more on the valence is because the valence electrons are the ones that actually do the reacting. Please write that down. Valence electrons are the electrons involved in reacting. Who remembers what the non-valence electrons are called? The ones that are not on the outside. Core electrons. Core electrons. So the outermost shell is valence, everything else is core. What did you say those electrons are? The bonding electrons. Valence electrons are the bonding electrons. So coming back to that first picture, sodium has one, two, three energy levels, three shells. But the valence one is just this outside one. And notice what, which electron is involved in the ionic reaction. The valence. the valence one. The core ones didn't change. They stayed the same. All right, so when you're drawing the Lewis structures, it's very easy. All you have to do is put the symbol. All you have to do is put the symbol. And then around it, you're going to put the valence electrons. Here's the trick. When you put the valence electrons, I want you guys to think of it like a compass. So, bye. Thank you. So, here you have north, east, west, and south. Put one dot in each, like, uh, what is it called? Uh, cardinal point. Cardinal point. Okay. <laughs> Very good. I don't know how you do that. So, put one dot in each cardinal point and, um, before you start pairing up. So, don't go like one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll go one, two, three, four, and then you'll start pairing. Five, six. Okay? On your notes, please draw the Lewis structure for oxygen. 
place for us to be. Okay. And uh, Kiara, if you could come up here and draw the Lewis structure for oxygen when you're done. on their paper. Yes. So you should have oxygen in the middle and then oxygen is in group six. Please remember in this class I use the AB system. So I know the textbooks say one through 18, but in this class it's gonna be group 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, and then 6A. Thank you, Edith. From now on we're just gonna leave them out there. <laughs> the group 6A. So it has six valence electrons because it's in group six. Oh yes, the student opened the door. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so again, oxygen is in group six, six valence electrons. You put one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, go ahead and do the same thing for hydrogen. And Richard, when you're done, can you come up here and put hydrogen on the board? valence electron, so you put H with one little dot. All right. And there we go. There's oxygen, and hydrogen's not there, but it's very simple to draw. Is oxygen happy with its six valence electrons? No. no. Is hydrogen happy with its one? No. no, right? Hydrogen can hold how many electrons? Two. If you guys remember, hydrogen can only hold two. Remember, it's that exception. And oxygen wants how many? Two. Eight. Oh, I mean, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Hydrogen can hold two. Oxi oxygen and most elements can hold eight. So, are these metals or non-metals? Non-metals. Non what kind of bond can we form? A covalent. If you ever see these electrons all by themselves, can we please look up here? If you see these electrons all by themselves, see here we have a single electron, and here I have a single electron. They actually are going to want to pair together. So I'm going to draw a hydrogen down here, pairing it up. I'm going to erase this guy for now. All right, so here you have two. They paired up together. Where else do I have a single electron all by itself? Right here, right? Another one. So what can I add to pair up with him? Another hydrogen. We made H2O. Uh, yeah. And then this compound has two hydrogens and one oxygen. What is it? H water. Water. H2O. Uh, water. <laughs> Questions? So again, when you see those single electrons, you want to pair them up with other single electrons. Oxygen had six. It was able to gain two. Hydrogen had one. It was able to gain one. 
Well, if I had two hydrogens, I can fill up everybody's octet. Sound good? All right. That was what we just did. When you have these two dots like this, you can replace it with a single line. That single line represents a single covalent bond. Later on this week, we're going to talk about double and triple covalent bonds. For now, that represents a single covalent bond. So I don't care if you draw two dots or if you draw the line, either is fine. That is called a bonding pair of electrons, bonding pair. This right here, do you guys see these two single electrons? Why don't I put a line for them? Because they're, they're not connected to another atom. They're not shared, they're not connected to another atom. Those are called lone pairs. Please write this down in your notes. This is called a bonded pair, and this is called a lone pair. Yes? You want us to draw all of them? If you want, you can just draw, you should already have the hydrogen and the oxygen. So you should already have this part. Just draw this now. Wait a minute, which one is the bonded, the two? The single line is the bonded. These are the lone pairs. That's vocabulary that you're going to need to know because when we get into future topics, we're going to talk more about those. So bonded pairs versus lone pairs of electrons. All right, when you guys are done with that, you have the rest of the class period to work on the exit ticket. I'm gonna take the uh, last five minutes to review it. So I'll walk around if you have any questions. Uh, should it be on a separate sheet of paper? Separate sheet of paper and the exit ticket is on Friday.